it's worth. Yeah, so let me just share. I think I'll share my screen itself. That's probably the best. <clears throat> okay, and uh, yeah, let me just go on to this and oh, I don't see that particular problem. One second. Um, yeah, so where was it? Okay, so essentially the first problem, uh, the degeneracy of the first excited state of an isolated hydrogen atom is. So I uh, did talk to Usha ma'am, and she is exactly of the same opinion that you are Nitin, that we should include the spin of the electron, okay? So um, the basic reasoning is this, that uh, when we kind of fill up a periodic table, you know, obviously the you know, the, the number that we are filling in uh, is representative in, in some sense of how many uh, slots are available and with particular energies, right? So in that sense, uh, the first excited or, uh, state of the hydrogen atom, yes, L and M wise, there are uh, essentially four states available. But now if you include the spin wave function, essentially there are eight slots available. So you would say that the degeneracy of the first excited state would be eight, okay? So this is at least uh, what Usha ma'am said. Uh, let me just um, give it a bit of thought because I'm a little uh, worried because yes, I agree that in the periodic table, it is going to be that way. But here you're calling it the first excited state of the hydrogen atom. So is there something very specific to the hydrogen atom that we are talking about over here? So I will just consult uh, one or two more people, okay, and get their thoughts on it. And then I will probably send you a WhatsApp mail on it. But so far as Usha ma'am is concerned, uh, she thinks that the answer should be eight, okay? So I hope that answers your question for the time being. Uh, let's move on. Okay, so I'm gonna just shut this off. Uh, we will move on to the miscellaneous problems. Uh, this I think is a problem all of you, please have a look at the first one. So what I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to send this across to you, okay? This uh, set of problems as well as the solutions, okay? Uh, what my request to you will be is that we will probably not be able to do all the problems and the solutions. Uh, the thing is that I would like you people to try. And of, obviously, if you don't get it, look at the solution for clues, all right? Uh, and if you get it, well and good. Okay, then there's no need to bother. You can just check out with the solutions to see whether the answers are correct. Now, the solutions, they have, again, uh, the way I have written the solutions, they are from various places. I've done at various points of time, obviously not from the same problem set. So the numbers are all, you know, they, they don't match up, but they are given in this exact same order. Okay, so I, I think as long as you count it, I think you should get it, all right? Uh, and of course, you know, you are all, smart people. I don't know why I'm saying all these things to you. You will know which solution is for what, okay? So that I think I should not worry about it. I tend to be a little over, uh, you know, instructive this way. And I get into a lot of trouble with my son because of it, okay? Because he keeps telling me, you know, like, look, stop giving me instructions like I'm an idiot, okay? And yeah, it, it's wrong, I know. So I think you people will be able to figure it out. So let's have a look at the first problem. And I think you've done several such problems, okay? Uh, so here, what you have been asked to do is to find out the commutator of x, p, x squared, okay? Now, uh, I think all of you probably, uh, you know, you know the answer. It is 2 i h cross p x, okay? The answer is D. But nonetheless, let me just share the solution uh, for you, with you. Yeah, so essentially, I mean, you can do it in several ways and I will just give you a general trick to the whole business. So, you know, the commutator of X, so everybody can see this, right? The solution, the handwritten solution. Is this clear yes, to everybody? Okay, good. So let me just get the annotate button because I know it can be annoying if you don't know where exactly I'm talking about. 
So just have a look. So essentially you would do it like this, right? I mean, x px into px minus px into pxx. And then of course you use the uh, original commutation relation that you know, that the commutation between x and px is ih cross. And then you can express basically a uh, pxx in terms of xpx, okay? And then once you have done it, you can essentially get to this final solution, sorry. I think I've just gone a little bonkers, yeah. So essentially you end up getting this particular answer 2ih cross px, okay. Uh, so this I think most of you would have done it, all right. So the choice was, as I told you, choice D. But I just want to take this a bit further and, and there is an important uh, lesson in this, okay. So let me one second, I would like to put this at a higher magnification. Okay, sorry. There's a bar which I have over here, which none of you are able to see. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, this particular thing. Okay, so essentially, when you have uh, x px to the power of n, all right, essentially, you will get a n ih cross px to the power of n minus one. Okay, so how do you essentially go about proving this? Now, this is an important thing to just keep in your mind. Uh, normally, I don't think people start uh, give you this particular thing anymore. They might in a competitive exam, but the point is it's usually not given, okay? Because they know that everybody knows the answer blind. But so it's a, but nonetheless, it's a good formula to keep in mind because you know, you will use it somewhere else. So now the thing is that how do you actually go about proving this, all right? So the point is what I uh, had done once was that I had used the method of induction. Now, uh, I think this is something that all of you would have done in your PU in math, okay? So can anybody tell me what is the method of induction? Any volunteers? You will uh, prove it for n equals one and then for uh, some k, you will assume it to be true. Correct. And then for k plus one. You prove it for k prove. plus one and then you say if it is true for n is equal to k it and it is thereby true for n is equal to k plus one. And since we know it is true for n is equal to one, it will work for everything, okay? So that is the method of induction, right? So you can do this with the method of induction, all right? We know that already that it is true for n is equal to two, okay? Uh, just uh, one second, uh, guys. I will just uh, have to take a call. Hello. Hey, hi, Sindhu. Huh. I, I am actually in a class. Can I call you back, Sindhu? Hey, no, no, no issues. After 5.30, I'll give you a call. Is that okay? Okay, cool, cool. Chalo, take care, take care, bye. Okay, sorry about that, yeah. So the thing is that, see, we know that it is uh, true when uh, this n is equal to two, right? We just have proved it. So I'm not gonna bother anymore about that. And then we assume that it is true for when n is equal to k. So let's imagine that we know this. And then we go ahead and do it for x p x to the power of k plus one. And then you will see that you can actually prove it. Okay, so you can have a look at the solution and you will find that this is indeed true. So method of induction could be a way of just proving this. All right. But there's actually a much nicer way. And uh, that is, uh, we should not be closeted into thinking that, you know, x is x. And px is what? ih cross d by dx, okay? We should not be closeted into thinking that. Remember that ph, px being equal to actually minus ih cross d by dx is essentially the representation of px in the uh, position representation, right? So we know that that is how uh, px is represented when we go for position representation. But position representation is not the only representation that works, right? I mean, we learn in formalism, you can go for different kinds of present, uh, representations. So now the point is that suppose, I this is, you know, another, I don't know which way I did it. Just one second, I think I'm just going ahead too much. Ah, very annoying. Just one second, guys. All 
right okay so this is what we just saw, saw the method of yeah so now let's just come here one second let me just go up i hope this is kind of clear to everybody oh this is so annoying i've gone back up again right yeah so i just wanted to show you the last method of doing it okay this is i think there's some other method i do it yeah so just look at this over here right oops ha huh. some days i don't have it too good yeah all right so i just want you you can do it you know in in other ways okay it's not a problem all right this is i think i've done it by the hardcore way of uh, you know actually taking the position representation and working it out all right i really need to throw away my computer or something yeah so this is essentially i have taken the pains to do it the hardcore way okay by taking the position representation now that was actually rather foolish okay i don't know some of you may have already launched up with it so i just let me try and see if i can show you what i have written at the bottom so it's actually a three line solution all right in momentum representation let me just see if i can put it in blue maybe you can see it a bit better okay the position is actually in momentum representation is written as ih cross do by do px now thereby the commutator between x and px to the power of n can just be written you know you do it in momentum representation and why how can i do this please remember this is actually a unitary transformation right going from position representation to unit uh, to momentum representation is essentially a unitary transformation and you know in unitary transformation the commutation relations remain unchanged this is something that we proved in formalism so this is precisely what we are using it's going to be convenient for us now to use the momentum re representation so let's just do it and get the commutation relation so what is happening over here now you are just writing it as ih cross do by do px px to the power of n just go ahead and do it in two steps you are going to get the answer that this is going to be nothing but ah as i said i should throw away my computer or myself okay and this is what you will get n px to the power of n minus 1 okay so this is as neat as that and of course you have an ih cross over here so you just get this as easily as that okay so why i kind of showed this problem to you is that take a deep breath remember that sometimes position representation is something that we are all very used to but sometimes it may not serve your purpose okay so then be flexible enough to write down momentum in position uh, write down position in momentum representation and you will notice that the problem just becomes simpler all right so this is just one example but there can be other places where you may need it so i just want you to have that flexibility all right so this is uh, i thought a uh, fairly nicely illustrative problems i did it by method of induction keep method of induction in your mind you can do it the hardcore way which i did okay brute force method i did that as well and what do you find that the most elegant way of doing it would have been to convert position in to momentum representation and just do it it's a two step answer you saw how long the other answers were this is just a two step answer okay so let's just move on any questions with regards to this everybody is okay no problems with the shifting between position representation and momentum representation no issues right none no okay great so let's now uh get to the next problem all right now this is actually just a, a problem which is to do with uncertainty all right so what does it say that an electron propagating along the x axis passes through a slit of width delta y equal to 1 nanometer the uncertainty in the y component of its velocity after passing through the slit is okay 
So essentially, uh, it's moving along the x-axis. You have a slit with the width of delta y. Okay. So obviously, you are now constraining the uncertainty in the position. And as a result, you should thereby be able to, by using the uncertainty principle, get the uh, uncertainty in the uh, velocity momentum and thereby the velocity. Okay. So let me just see where hopefully I won't make it run around all over the place. Okay. So here you can see delta y is equal to one nanometer. From the uncertainty principle, we know that delta y into delta p y must be greater than or equal to h cross. And then how do we write delta p y? I think all of you know this. This is going to be mass of the electron into. Um, the isn't electron. the right hand side h cross by two? Ah, yeah. It should be h cross by two. Okay. It should be h cross by two. Please. Okay. So yes, we did the uncertainty all the time. So yes, it will be h cross by two. So essentially over here. Okay, I think I should not touch my computer pad or something like that when I'm, you know, telling you how to do the problems because I'm just making it run all over the place. Yes, you're right. It is h cross by two. How did I manage to go for so far down? Unbelievable. Okay, yeah. So essentially you can do this and calculate, all right? I'm not again going to go into the calculation. Try and do it yourselves and figure it out, okay? And yeah, if there are errors in the solution, kindly just write to me so that I can rectify them, all right? And I don't subject your poor juniors to it as well. Right, now uh, let's have a look at the third problem, okay? So now this is a scattering uh, problem. And uh, what uh, is written is that a particle is scattered by a central potential if the dominant contribution to the scattering is from the P wave, then what is the differential cross section? Okay, so let's just have a look at this problem. We haven't really done any problems in uh, scattering, but there is nothing really very uh, remarkable about this, okay? This particular problem. If only I could stop making the things run around like that. Okay. All right. So scattering from a pet central potential, uh, what you have to remember is that the system is completely symmetrical about the direction of incidence. Okay. So if you take the direction of incidence to be the z-axis, then around the z-axis, okay, there should be a complete uh, symmetry of the scattering. All right. So now uh, let's go further. Uh, so the point is that uh, the wave function thereby will depend only upon theta, all right, and not on the azimuthal angle phi, okay. So let's have a, with that information itself, let's look at the answers that you get over here. So what do they say? The differential cross section will be isotropic, proportional to cos square theta, proportional to cos theta cos square phi, proportional to sine square theta sine square phi. So what did I tell you that it's a central potential. It has to be isotropic around the Z axis, which means that the phi dependence is going to vanish. All right. So thereby automatically you can get rid of the C and the D options. All right. It's unlikely to be isotropic. So that will also go. So the chances are that it is proportional to cos square theta. So let me just see whether I've written anything further than this. Okay. I've written essentially that you can uh, do the wave function in a central potential scattering. You can do the wave function. You can expand it in essentially a partial wave uh, expansion like this. And these are essentially your Legendre polynomials, which depend upon cos theta. Now, um, what I have written over here is that following the spectroscopic notation that L is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, partial waves are, you know, with the L, what you're given over here, right? Uh, the partial waves are also known as S waves, the P wave, the D wave, and the F wave, okay? And here, what you have been told is that the scattering is from the P wave, which is going to be essentially L is equal to one. Now think about what is P1 cos theta. It is nothing but cos theta itself, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah? So the point is that thereby, 
if you consider your differential scattering cross section it is nothing but the amplitude of the scattered wave okay square right mod square right isn't it so this is something that you have to remember from your scattering the some of the initial things that we did where we showed that the differential scattering cross section is nothing but the scattered if you write the wave function as incident wave function plus scattered wave function there is an amplitude which is associated with that scattered wave function modulus of that amplitude square is essentially your differential scattering cross section so here for instance you know that you are talking about p wave uh, the p wave being the dominant one and p wave corresponds to l is equal to 1 that means you are going to go for the first legendre polynomial p1 cos theta is nothing but cos theta so you it, it should be proportional to cos theta square okay so that anyway as i said that you could have probably uh, derived this just by elimination okay knowing that it is a central potential and the dependence uh, goes away from phi you could have eliminated the last two and then it's unlikely to be isotropic so eliminate one and thereby you have a proportional to cos square theta which is going to be your answer right okay let us go to the next one okay so here what is given is the phase velocity and group velocity of the de broglie wave in free space okay and you have been asked to find their relation i think this is something that you can do on your own okay from the uh, what do you call the nonetheless let me just give you an idea i will not spend too much time on it okay so basically you need the definitions of the phase velocity and the group velocity uh, phase velocity is nothing but omega by k and the uh, the group velocity is essentially d omega by dk all right and then essentially you find out what is the relation between them i think this is something that you probably derived in your uh, uh, unit 1 in semester 1 so i will just leave you with it okay you can check out my uh, answer and uh, I, if if you have any confusion but i don't think you will all right so now again the next problem it's a fairly uh, you know simple i mean it's a, it's a it's a trivial one rather uh, which one of the following pairs of phenomena illustrates the particle aspect of wave particle duality uh, i think again i will leave this to you all right you can check out which of these you think is the one that uh, illustrates the particle nature in a wave particle duality situation again this is uh, the next one uh, is a uncertainty uh, relation okay Uh, and it's uh, here essentially you've been asked to find the minimum uncertainty in the velocity of the electron orbiting the nucleus at a radius r now if i remember right there was a lot of um, confusion okay about um, yeah whether it would be r or d uh, 2 r the uncertainty all right so given that an electron is orbiting a nucleus at radius r to find the minimum uncertainty in the velocity uh, again you start off with the uncertainty relation and yes it should be h cross by 2 okay and uh, what you know is that your delta v will be nothing but delta p by m correct and then you can write it in terms of the h cross all right and do it now what about your delta x the delta x can be the de broglie wavelength of the electron all right so what i had also written over here instead of this assume the maximum uncertainty in the position to give minimum uncertainty in the momentum uh, this would be 2r okay and i think there was some confusion uh, with respect to the answer and again as i tell you it's because some of these problems one has picked up from students who had given these competitive exams this is ages back okay and uh, one just kind of wrote down the thing according to the choices that they had mentioned so it may not actually appear but give this problem a shot i think you can do it so you can either take uh, the delta x to be the de broglie wavelength of the electron all right and then you can put this by h cross by 2 yeah 
uh, also the other choice would be you could go for the uncertainty in the position to be twice the radius of the atom okay so that i mean i i frankly don't know which one works and i think no matter what you did you, i didn't get the correct choice okay so i'm going to leave it to you smarter guys to kind of try and come up with an answer the next uh, miscellaneous problem again i'm going to leave it to you all right uncertainty relation does not hold for which of the following pairs okay i think you can do it right then which of the following could be a solution of the schrodinger equation for all values of x uh this again i think it is something that you guys can handle uh you know the properties of a wave function okay the fact that it should be single valued it should be bounded it should be uh, uh differentiable right uh, continuous okay uh, try and put in all those things and see uh, how to get the answer all right so i think that again is something that you can manage let's have a look at the ninth problem all right now the ninth problem says the expectation value of the momentum of a particle whose wave function and you have a wave function that's given n e to the power of minus x square by 2a square plus i k x is okay so this is being given uh so let's have a look at the solution for this all right so let's just go yeah this i think is still we are doing the wave functions yeah so this is the problem so essentially you can go ahead and calculate the uh, expectation value and uh, when you do that okay just go on with it all right again it's a, it's just a matter of doing the Uh, you know putting in the px in the uh, position representation and going ahead and solving okay for the expectation value you have done enough of this uh, you can of course normalize it or you can just divide it by the uh, inner product of the wave function with itself and what you realize over here is what you get is essentially h cross k all right uh, now uh, i have not been able to uh, come up with an easier answer for this but if you look at it is essentially the wave function just let me go up the wave function ah, sorry okay i'm going to keep losing my temper like this it looks like okay it Mom, is in the, yeah in the view option uh, um, i think you should uh, shift to uh, scrolling rather than uh, i mean continuous pages rather than shifting the uh, pages by one unit what does in it say view. in the view option what do i have page display page display yep uh, enable, enable scrolling. scrolling okay thanks yes, thank you very much nitin you have saved my oh, who, who was it who told Chetan. me chetan chetan told me yeah thanks chetan because i was really driving myself insane okay thanks That's a lot fine. <laughs> no i wish i knew this trick nobody told me this before <laughs> because i think i have you know driven whole bunches of people insane by doing crazy things like this thanks okay so the point is it see the wave function you can write it as e to the power of minus x square by 2a square into e to the power of i k x all right and obviously the you know when you come to the momentum so this actually uh, seems to be more like a part of the amplitude in some sense okay which is of course a function of x but the momentum seems to be de determined more by the e to the power of i k x okay uh, i don't really have a Uh, a solid explanation for this but i do believe that this entire paraphernalia which i have done over here need not have been done and you could have just gone directly and written it down as h cross k okay so basically the um what do i say if you look at it over here you can see that the e to the power of i k x that is like a plane wave okay 
which is telling you how the um, progression happens okay how the um, uh, basically that is the plane wave uh, representative in in some sense e to the power of i k x okay that that i think you will all agree the uh, e to the power of minus x square by 2 a square into n essentially gives you a kind of a uh, a position dependent amplitude okay so it does not really uh, change the wave number so what i'm saying is that if you have an e to the power of i k x okay and there's nothing else over there identify what is the k and just write that, that down as the momentum okay instead of going through this entire thing of the expectation value so we can try you know some other uh, you know like uh, just change that k to something else do the entire expectation value and i'm absolutely sure you will get exactly the same answer whatever is this e to the power of i some number uh, some uh, scalar constant okay over there times x that will be what will essentially connect up with the momentum h cross h cross uh, times that particular quantity okay so there is no need to do this as i was saying so it's just been made to look a little you know complicated but what i think you should be able to look at such a wave function identify that this is an e to the power of i k x and then just attach the momentum to the thing that you can identify as k okay i don't know whether i made sense but uh, i am hoping i did all right so you can try just altering this a bit okay so let us say you put it as n e to the power of minus x square by 2 a square plus i then you put some c square by 3 x okay i am sure that if you did the entire thing you will get your answer as c square by 3 uh, k okay there is no question about it it's not that this has happened by a trick of uh, the particular numbers that are over here all right so this is what i'm just trying to say okay right so let's now move on so uh, you know i am mean, i am basically trying to tell you now tricks and methods in which you can probably make the whole thing a bit simpler for yourself and thereby save time all right let's have a look over here the 10th problem all right this is that uh, you are using the standard definition of a hermitian oper operator and you need to find out which of the following operators is actually hermitian all right so let's have a look at it it has i d by dx then it has d by dx the whole square it has d by dx q and then it has just d by dx all right now uh, there is probably a certain way in which you can do it remember that all the operators as are associated with real observables okay things that you can see in your day to day life those are invariably hermitian okay so this is a very important clue to take away you know that this kind of a form appears for some quantity which you know is a physical quantity believe me just uh, run with the idea that that operator is going to be hermitian so for instance if you see i d by dx you know that the momentum is i h cross minus i h cross d by dx okay so the chances are and we know momentum is a hermitian operator the chances are that a is a hermitian operator okay i d by dx look at d by dx square right where would you see this so the point is that you will encounter this when you do px square and px square you know is connected with the kinetic energy again this is going to be hermitian this d by dx is not going to be hermitian i can tell you that straight away okay it is i d by dx which is hermitian and similarly d by dx cube is not going to be hermitian what would be hermitian is i d by dx cube okay so the point is just let's have a look at the solution and let's see now with the chetan's uh, scrolling will make life easier for us okay it does thank you <laughs> eternally grateful yes so uh, what have i written over here i have just written down the uh, the formal definition of what is a hermitian operator and then gone with i d by dx so how would you actually do it uh, what you know is a hermitian operator is that if you do an inner product between psi and a psi it should be the same as the inner product of a psi psi 
so over here we have done first uh, psi a psi okay i have written it down like this okay so that is nothing but integral from minus infinity to plus infinity psi star i d by dx of psi dx now leave this alone and then go to the other one which is a psi psi in a product between a psi psi and that is actually going to look like this right yeah so it's going to be i d psi by dx the whole complex conjugate and then psi dx and work it out all right so when you work it out you can do it uh, integrating by parts all right what you'll end up with finally is uh, integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi star i d psi dx dx all right which is nothing but this thing over here so thereby you know that the two of them are the same okay so this is the formal way of proving that something is hermitian but as i said you can always do it by associating the form that you are seeing with some physical observable and you know that those are bound to be hermitian right so similarly let us see i have done it for d square dx square all right yeah so uh what uh, i you know i have also done is that we know that i d by dx is hermitian if something is hermitian then believe me a square is also hermitian okay so essentially remember i d by dx i d by dx will give you minus d square by dx square nonetheless we know that the negative signs are not really going to bother us too much so let us try this a square where we know a is hermitian okay so i want to prove whether a square dagger is the same as a square so you can just put it as a a dagger and then you know what you will get you will end up getting with a square so th thereby if an operator is hermitian if you operate it twice it still stays hermitian okay so this is uh, one way of doing it the other is that you know this is the kinetic energy operator and thereby it is bound to be hermitian what about the third one where you have essentially uh, okay i think these are the i have shown some three alternate methods of doing it the first is this okay that uh, you know that if a is hermitian then a square is hermitian uh, the second is that you know that it's a kinetic energy operator and the third is of course i have done it in the brute force method right so the brute force method anyway you can just go and do it exactly the way i showed you the uh, with the earlier one and you will be end up you will end up doing integration by parts in two rounds doesn't matter and finally you will end up proving that it is uh, basically psi a psi is nothing but a psi psi all right now uh, so thereby d square by dx square is hermitian what about this this i have actually done it only by the brute force method all right you can uh, do the whole thing and what you will find out finally is that a psi psi is nothing but minus psi a psi all right so what you uh, i have written over it's not hermitian but note that if you had multiplied this by with an i i d cube d x is cube this would be hermitian and actually you can also show that your i um d by dx cube is going to be essentially i d cube by dx is cube okay maybe there's a minus sign but it doesn't matter it is essentially uh, thrice that operator operated will still remain hermitian all right how how about d by dx i mean this is of course now kind of trivial all right you can prove that this is actually not hermitian all right so you will end up putting uh, proving that a psi psi where a is d by dx is going to be minus psi a psi all right so this is not hermitian give it a shot try it yourselves and anyway the solutions are going to be put up as well so you can always look at it if you run into any kind of trouble i don't think so okay you guys are all much better at integration than i am uh, not just integration uh, so i'm sure you'll get it correctly uh, the next one is again an uncertainty uh, of a location of a particle okay kind of a problem i'm going to leave it okay i think you'll be able to do it so i'm not going to work out this particular problem next let's have a look you have essentially a gaussian wave packet all right uh, which is defined as a e to the power of minus x square by a square and you have asked to find the expectation value of the momentum i think uh, 
uh, you know it right Ga gaussian wave packet uh, where, where do we see it actually this uh, solution delta function uh, delta function no na uh, no, no uh, high uh, the same uh, harmonic oscillator exactly harmonic state. oscillator so can you tell me what is the expectation value of the momentum you have already done it actually for harmonic oscillator so what will be the expectation value of the momentum please what is the expectation value of the position this is ground state right no clue anybody all of you solved it yeah come on a by 2 for position no 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 see this is uh a position a by 2 no this is for what the harmonic oscillator correct so for a harmonic oscillator what is the expectation value of the position at any state actually it doesn't matter whether it's a ground state or excited state it's always equilibrium I'm position no it is zero correct now apply arin fest theorem what should you get zero exactly so you should get zero all right so there's no need i think i have done it uh, in the complicated way all right but finally this is the answer i got okay there was no need to do all this complicated things all right you can have a look at it you can always go ahead and solve it by the ladder method also but here of course i mean you are not going by the assumption that this is the ground state wave function for a harmonic oscillator you're just saying okay i have a gaussian uh, package and I, i mean no it's not a gaussian package it's a gaussian wave function and i'm going to just uh, work on that okay so if you do it you will still get a zero but uh, remember anything which is symmetric okay so you see how, uh, around what it is symmetric all right there is no time dependence here so there's no confusion all right uh see around what it is symmetric you can see it is symmetric around x is equal to 0 correct yeah so thereby your expectation value of x is going to uh, of the position is going to be 0 once you know the expectation value of the position automatically apply arin fest theorem and you will be able to get the expectation value of the momentum which will be also 0 yeah okay so this i mean in some sense it's a trivial problem okay you should be able to solve it really fast all right even if you didn't remember what you have done with your harmonic oscillator so as i said you know it's sometimes very very important to be able to remember the form of the wave function and just you know slap it on to something and then you know all the properties like carry over all right so just uh, uh, that's why sometimes these miscellaneous problems are good in the sense you know it kind of gives you an exercise into uh, associating certain uh, wave functions functional forms with certain wave functions okay right so now uh, let's come here to the 13th problem which says that the nuclear magnetic moments are okay and then you have several choices uh, basically it's a comparison between the magnetic moment of the electron all right so it is uh, you know it says it's a 0.001 times uh, smaller than then there is 0.01 times smaller than 100 times larger than and of the same order as so what uh, i think you should immediately know uh, is that nuclear magnetic moments are usually way way smaller than the uh, magnetic moment of the electron and uh, what is the formula that you have there is a mass which i think uh, divides the whole thing yeah there is your bohr magneton that is mu b e h cross by 2 m m being the mass of the electron and the nuclear magneton defining it by the same uh, way will be eh cross divided by 2 times the mass of the proton now whether you remember the exact uh, numbers of the mass of the proton and the electron i think it is will suffice for you to know that it is about a thousand okay or three orders of magnitude larger okay so the moment you say it is three three uh, orders of magnitude larger you know that your answer is going to be a so 0.001 times smaller 
okay so basically the nuclear magnetic moment is going to be about an order three orders of magnitude smaller than the magnetic moment on the electron okay so basically keep the definition of the magnetons in your mind okay whether it's the nuclear magneton or the uh, bohr magneton all right so it's eh cross by um, what is it 2m right yeah 2m okay so this is uh, yeah so let's now see what are the problems are left okay there is actually a bunch more <laughs> you see okay again this is uh, yeah so what you can see is that it looks like uncertainty is uh, you know at least every batch i think has faced some been given some in some competitive exam or the other people seem to love giving them uncertainty uh, uh, principle based problems but i think you know you so you should just get the trick of you know remembering that this is associated with uncertainty and just be able to solve it so again this is something i'm going to leave for you to do all right uh, let's move on to the next one okay uh, what does this say uh, it's asking you the question whether this particular operator is hermitian okay so what is it minus ih cross x d by dy minus y d by dx and you are being asked whether it's hermitian now uh, there can be i think several ways of doing it but the quickest way of doing it would be to identify this as lz okay so the orbital angular momentum the z component okay so just please you know i mean these kind of as i said operational forms uh, forms of the wave function these should just strike you like that all right and what you should be able to immediately identify this as lz and you know that each of the components of the angular momentum they are again physical quantities they are bound to be hermitian okay so lx is hermitian ly is hermitian lz is hermitian l square is of course hermitian all right so there's no problem about that so this is lz and this is thereby hermitian okay so don't start solving a whole bunch of things there's no need all right <clears throat> now let's uh, come here which of the following operators in quantum mechanics corresponds to the real classical observable xp where x represents motion and p represents momentum of a particle okay so this is what has been asked and uh, just remember um, you need a hermitian operator all right so again this is kind of a hermitian operator problem so let's all right so let's come here so the point is that uh, as i have written over here if we are to have real eigen values then it is essential that the quantum mechanical operator corresponding to the classical observable xp is hermitian now <clears throat> the point is that hermitian operator means that your a dagger must be equal to a as you can see that the a choice a xp itself will give you px okay if you try to take the uh transpose conjugate of it so thereby it is obviously not hermitian then uh, px of course same problem exists then if you try to do a uh, px xp minus px divided by 2 you will end up getting it equal to minus xp minus px divided by 2 which is essentially anti hermitian so only your fourth choice works okay which is essentially you you take the uh, transpose conjugate of that and you will end up getting exactly the same uh, operator so that's hermitian so as so if you want the quantum mechanical equivalent of the classical operator position into momentum it is going to be position into momentum plus momentum position divided by time 2 uh, okay so this is essentially the representation of the quantum mechanical representation of the classical operator which is position times momentum okay so uh, as i see uh, you know these miscellaneous problems <clears throat> you have to be willing to let your mind be very flexible and try and uh, okay i don't know what has come over here can all of you see this blank white sheet in middle 
or only i can see it yes ma'am okay i'm going to try and close it it is some yeah some strange thing had happened doesn't matter it's gone now right yeah <clears throat> so essentially uh, your mind needs to be a bit more flexible to be able to handle these problems okay they are not necessarily tough in fact none of them were tough as i uh, showed you but uh, they require a bit of flexibility okay so i have another problem set let's just look at that and see whether we can make some headway through that as well okay okay so let me just share the next thing <clears throat> all right okay so here uh, what is this uh, we have essentially a system with the hamiltonian and this hamiltonian is given as h cross omega a a dagger okay where a and a dagger satisfy this particular commutation relation and its ground state is given by this this ket and what you have over here is that a acting on zero will give you the null vector all right so that is essentially telling you that this a is acting as the lowering operator okay a dagger which would thereby be <coughs> the uh, raising operator then they are asking you for the ground state energy of the system so the ground state energy of the system of course is going to be h cross omega a a dagger acting upon this null vector and you are supposed to find out what is the answer so let's have a look at <clears throat> okay it's rather bad i'm sorry okay i hope you can see this all right so h acting on zero is nothing but e0 acting on zero i mean e0 multiplying zero e0 being your ground state energy so this will be nothing but h cross omega a dagger acting on zero and then you use your commutator relation okay to <clears throat> basically make it uh, your a a dagger can be replaced as 1 plus a dagger a all right uh, acting on zero so this will be nothing but h cross omega times this uh, ground state wave function plus h cross omega a dagger a again acting on this ground state wave function this will be equal be equal to e0 maybe i have lost that uh, no i don't think so yeah all right uh, acting on zero so you can see that a acting on this ground state wave function will give you a zero so this term here is going to essentially vanish and you'll be left with e0 times the ground state wave function is nothing but h cross omega times the ground state wave function so obviously the ground state energy is going to be h cross omega okay so this is okay i think i've opened the wrong one yeah so this is the uh, basic answer c is your choice okay yeah um, now this actually has a slightly uh, dangerous choice it says impossible to determine from the information given uh, so you know you cannot uh, if you don't uh, get the answer uh, you actually can always rely on this particular choice so that makes it a little tricky okay you have to be absolutely sure of your answer all right now what is given over here the minimum kinetic energy that an electron must possess to be able to penetrate the nucleus whose dimensions are of the order of 10 to the power of minus 15 meter so basically one fermi is given by right so this is the question that has been asked and what you have to do in this particular case okay i've already i've written the question so that makes following these notes a bit simpler i think okay so again you go and it look uh, nitin i'm sorry i think i've written h cross all over the place all right <laughs> so the point is it's delta x you have to you know the uncertainty in the position you have you have to put it as 10 to the power of minus 15 all right and then 
your delta px will be there by uh, h cross divided by the delta x which is 10 to the power of minus 15 so now your minimum uh, momentum can be delta p and then uh, over here okay there is one trick because it is high energies you actually have to consider the relativistic situation okay and there you can basically uh, you know you go for so I, I mean i don't know what i had actually done over here because it looks like i have finally actually uh, ignored this okay and i have said that is it ultra relativistic i really don't know what i was thinking at that particular point of time but if you write e is uh, root of uh, p square c square essentially you will get your choice c i think i was finding it difficult to match a choice which is why i wrote it down like this i actually don't know what was going through the head of the person who was uh, doing uh, who set up this question but nonetheless uh, what you realize is that you have to talk about an electron being able to penetrate into the nucleus and thereby if it is in the nucleus its uncertainty in position really shrinks okay and once it shrinks the uncertainty in the momentum becomes crazy minimum uh, momentum can be taken to be the uncertainty in the momentum and from there you can go ahead and calculate the energy and here i have basically taken a relativistic uh, value ignoring the rest mass uh, energy obviously all right <clears throat> so essentially i have done just pc and given the answer all right so now oh we are already busting time let us see um um okay i would say okay most of these i think you will be able to handle all right uh, let me just uh, one more problem i will just do with you guys and then we will stop okay the rest of it i please uh, you know just i will put up as i said both the sets as well as the solutions sometimes the solutions may not be correct okay <clears throat> or there may be much more trivial ways of doing it uh, yeah don't laugh at me all right okay <laughs> because i think these are some of the solutions which i had uh, you know i just dug them all up and i put it together so don't uh, you know i mean i know that my thought process has changed over time all right so anyway have a look at this particular problem you have given psi x and it has essentially a combination of um, three different plane waves let me put it okay so you have half e to the power of i k x plus half e to the power of minus 2 i k x and then you have 1 by root 2 e to the power of 3 i k x so if you kind of look at uh, this is k1 k2 and k3 so you can say that k1 is equal to k k2 is equal to minus 2k and k3 is equal to 3k all right so k1 k2 and k3 are completely distinct so now how do you solve for the expectation value of the momentum here okay so let me just <clears throat> show you the solution yeah all right so essentially i have written down the three wave functions the plane waves all right and now your psi x is essentially a linear combination of this okay let me do it in blue maybe it is more visible to you now uh, first things first of course it is always a good idea to basically uh, check for whether it is normalized okay so kindly do that and in this particular case what is going to help you is essentially this particular uh, uh, relation okay that if you do an integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star k prime x psi k x dx okay and that is essentially coming from this relation where k and k prime are not the same you will get delta k minus k prime okay so this is a very important uh, relation that you have to remember <clears throat> and using this okay 
you can go ahead and find out what is the momentum what this delta is going to help you do is that you will not get any kind of cross terms okay your cross terms are all going to vanish so essentially this conjugate into this conjugate is going to give you some value whereas this into this is going to uh, whereas this into the other terms okay is essentially going to give you zero so this is a little important to remember and uh, finally you will get some answer which is essentially uh, basically 1.25 h cross k okay so uh, what i would ask you people to commit to memory is essentially how it works with plane waves and this particular relation is an extremely important one i have in fact written over here branson and yoshin this is in my version that is second edition okay i have the book up there that's why i know it is the second edition on page 140 and this is the relation which i have picked up from the appendix a so kindly use this relation and work out what is the expectation value of the momentum okay it is not a tough problem or anything but you need to know that relation okay so i think i will stop here there are more problems i don't know how many problems are there 8 9 10 okay so there were three more problems doesn't matter have a look at them have a look at the solutions i will be putting them both up on the um, drive all right i will try and do it today itself all right so that you can have a look and uh, i think uh, we are going to have internals on friday right uh, meera ma'am has already announced to you right yes or no yes ma'am okay so i think it is going to be from 1 to 2 and it's going to be uh, essentially objective type so uh, for the internals at least uh, we will try and keep an objective type paper which can be solved really quickly all right because it's only an hour long and i think you are supposed to attempt uh, 25 questions which does not give you too much time for each question okay so we will try and keep it a fairly uh, something that can be solved in a very short amount of time okay because we do want you to score decently don't worry about it so prepare well i will put this up today itself i know that you have a constraint about that i'll put this up today itself and uh, all the best for your internals and have a look at these problems any time you have an issue or you have some extra problem which you found somewhere else which you could not solve uh, kindly you know bring it to me or send it over to me i may take a bit of time but i will try and get back to you with the solution okay fine yeah so i think we'll let's admit uh zabiullah in yeah so i think we can stop the share i'm sorry it was like a very uh, quick run through of the uh, miscellaneous problems today but uh, yeah what to do i mean like uh, i am otherwise i take ages yeah that's the truth <laughs> okay but nonetheless uh, you know like uh, there are certain problems which i have left for you to do and you can always look at the solutions if you get stuck in any way all right okay then so i think yeah i have 8 minutes over shot over shot my time so nonetheless and you guys must be tired you wrote a test today also right if i'm not mistaken is that true yes ma'am okay so yeah you must be all quite tired so fine then take it easy for at least rest a bit but do prepare well for the internals and uh, i'm sure you guys will do well okay don't worry about it okay then take care see you all uh, maybe in uh, person hopefully in the department sometime all right bye for now